Hello, and welcome to another Wednesday, another episode of Ubi Neko. Uh, we're playing Requiem of the Golden Witch, and today is going to be a slightly shorter episode, because I have to be up very fucking early, and, uh... Hmm, I thought my blinking was broken, but it's fine. Hello, cat, how are you doing? As always, uh, gonna start off with our content warning, because <laughs> I had to make a little change again. Um, but this time it's not as, you know, serious as most of the other ones have been. <laughs> the list is- the list grows. Um, it looks very intimidating, I'm sure, but I- I promise it's just because I was goofing off and referring to one of the, uh, first content warnings we did. Regular amount of blinking for an inhabitant of your skin suit. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you. This is not skin. This is a drawing. Sorry. Bad joke, I know. Um, but yeah, it is the regular amount of blinking. It's just that sometimes the eyes are like... Must be the new update. Interesting. Anyway, that's fine. That's that's not a concern right now. Our content warning. Uh, let's get back to that real quick. Content warning for character deaths, detailed descriptions of gore and body horror, um, child abuse, discussion and mentions of incest, discussion and mentions of suicide, characters struggling with gender dysphoria, which again is in there uh, in case you yourself are struggling with that and um, need to step away. Because, you know, uh, I know from personal experience that some of the upcoming bits can make that a little harder to deal with. It hits quite close to home. However, in today's episode, I don't think we're going to be dealing with that. Yeah, there's not going to be enough time, for sure. But, you know, for the long run, keep that in mind. And look after yourself, first and foremost. Uh, that also misogyny, which is a, a staple of the series, let's be real here, a recurring theme. Um, when I say staple, I don't mean this is like a, the type of story that's written from a, like a misogynist point of view, but it deals with it and critiques it very harshly. And our new content warning for today, uh, the spectacular triumphant, triumphant? What's the opposite of triumphant? That still sounds like, like a, you know, like a, hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a word that's like the opposite of triumphant without it sounding really, really mean and harsh. And I can't think of anything. Anyway, returning from the early days of the series, uh, a familiar one to some of you, I'm sure. Awkward skeeviness, because, uh, typo there, Battler is a teenage boy in the 80s. Yes, he's gonna be back, and he's gonna say awkward skeevy things just like he used to, and then he stopped, and we were all very grateful for that. And then it started up again. Oopsies. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a temporary one. Because, you know, he, he went through some character growth. He's not going to stay that way. Vanquished, yes. We vanquished this one, and now it makes a return. Um, also, hello, Lulu. Thank you for lurking. I hope you're doing good. Welcome, welcome. Vanquished indeed, because like I said, Battler has gone through some character growth. And today, that character growth will be undone by time. Because last week, we started delving into the life of the culprit, the person who killed Beatrice. How they grew up, some of the things they went through, and we're still uh, going to be going through that today. Basically, their entire backstory is being told to us from the perspective of 
Claire, who is kind of a, a stand-in. Like, we, we, know, we see what she looks like, but that is not what the culprit looks like. Um, it's a, a way for the culprit to remain hidden, in a way. But we see the culprit's thoughts, feelings, experiences, and uh, that's what happened last time. And it was rough. Um, this is a very young child who's been made to work in the mansion for reasons that nobody understands, really. Um, and uh, she's very lonely, is bullied, is, you know, a child made to do work that she's too young for, so she struggles with that. And she really only has one friend, which is Shannon. And another thing that... Uh, some of you noticed is that the other servants look very similar to the seven stakes of purgatory um so that's interesting too and uh with that all like recapped and we've gone through the content warnings and all that jazz let's start the game also yeah if you need to focus on your work Focus on your work. Good luck. I hope it all goes well. So, you know, in my my personal experience, it, it helps to sometimes have background noise, or you know, just a little bit of a not a distraction, but you know, something to kind of break thing break the monotony a bit. If I'm working on repetitive tasks, for instance, for instance, I don't know. It helps me focus sometimes. But it depends, you know, you gotta do what works best for you. Alright. <laughs> Try putting it off until it's no longer important is uh, also some advice. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's good advice, but I don't wanna judge. Honestly, sometimes just avoiding something is a good tactic, but it super depends. That only really works for things that weren't important in the first place. I need to turn my volume down a little bit. It was quite loud. Oh, it's Satan. I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but for some re reason, um, this is not... For anyone hopping in on this very late, when I say Satan, I mean a character named Satan that this character looks like. I don't mean that this random looking girl is actually Satan. Just for context, okay. Don't worry about that. Um, but I don't think I ever mentioned that Satan uh, is the favorite my favorite of the stakes. The uh, stakes of purgatory, specifically. Not literal stakes. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm already rambling and we haven't even started yet. Anyway. L let me just actually do the reading, which is what I'm, uh, so what I'm here for. I've had a long day. I'm a little tired. Oh my god. I can put that next to the Anja Burger. On the menu. Along with the Aronovia's cookies. And there's another joke that Matt Battler makes at some point. I don't want to make it. All the stuff that Rosa gets fed. There's a lot of creepy foods related stuff in this series, actually. Let's be real. Bit of a theme there, huh? Anyway. Back to not Satan. Yasu! What did you do with the small broom? Didn't you use it to, cl to clean the window frames? Ah. The small broom is a small, thin broom that 
looks like a large paintbrush. We use it to clear out the dust in small corners, like window frames. It's one of the cleaning tools I was put in charge of. Come on, that was your responsibility, right? What are you doing, stupid? Quickly, go and find it. You have to do it before Madame finds out. What's up? Yasu lost the small broom again. Is this kid some sort of genius at losing things? That's why I'm always telling you, never give things to Yasu. Yasu's always careless in losing things. Don't say that. Can't you see this kid's working hard? Come on, quickly. I'll wait for you. Uh, okay. Not wanting to hear the servants complain even more, I spun around and headed off. If you lose a tool, you get in trouble. If no one knows who did it, we all get yelled at. So one of them will probably tell Madam that it was my fault. Still, it is my fault that I lost it in the first place. I wonder when I lost it. When? When? We did a big clean of the entire chapel today. The chapel is a large building behind the mansion. However, no one ever goes near it normally. Even so, we were ordered to clean the chapel a few times each year. Kinzo calls it a sacred building, so Natsuhi is very strict about it. We cleaned every little nook and cranny, from top to bottom. It took all day. I'd been put, put in charge of cleaning the window frames, but I was also given many smaller tasks. While those small jobs kept me busy, I must have completely forgotten about the small broom and left it lying around somewhere. I hate myself for doing this. This isn't the first time this has happened. It happens all the time. Every time I set something down, it always disappears. It goes somewhere else. Vanishes. I've come to think that these might be pranks by the witch Beatrice. The ghost of the witch Beatrice borrowed pow the power of Rokenjima's evil spirits to become reborn. Until Kumasawa-san told me, I never knew the meaning of the shrine on the rocks by the sea. Kumasawa told an old, old tale passed down among the local fishermen. Rokunjima used to be known as Akujikijima, and terrible evil spirits who ate to human souls lived there. Hey, Kumasawa, let us hear too. Tell us the scary, scary tale of Rokunjima's evil spirits. Oh, very well, very well. Rokunjima used to be called Azukijima. However, even deeper, in the distant past, it was known as Akuchikijima. It was rumored that sailors who got too near the island were dragged down to the bottom of the sea and had their souls eaten. Those frightening spirits do exist on this island, you know. <laughs> it was Kumasawa's favorite ghost story. Every new servant who came to the island heard about it. Normally, such a story would be laughed away. However, on the Rokanjima, an island home to nothing but the Rokanjima mansion, which rumbled with eerie thunder on stormy nights. People listened to the story with unusual respect. So, the shrine by the coast is there to seal evil spirits away. And the master has that weird occult hobby too. And the mansion is so creepy, something must be lurking around somewhere. <laughs> true, true. Sealing up the spirits was all that the traveling ascetic could manage. The seal just manages to hold them, but to this very day, they wander through the mansion, night after night, searching for a victim. 
<laughs> have you seen the master's study? I have. It's like some kind of demon laboratory. Laboratory? Whichever you prefer. There's that rumor about the master researching demons. They also say he's researching how to revive his mistress, Beatrice. Didn't they say he was gathering children to be sacrifices for his magic experiments? What scary! What will I do if the master asks me to come ask me to come into the study alone? I heard that long ago one kid went into the study and never came out. She must have been a victim of an experiment to, to give Beatrice's ghost a new body. <laughs> yes, Beatrice-sama has become a ghost and wanders around searching for a body. The VIP room on the second floor is where Beatrice-sama dwells. You must always be respectful when cleaning that room. Otherwise... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Kumasawa! I did... I did not expect that. Uh, that almost got me. I don't, f I don't fall for Kumasawa's tricks anymore. I'm a, I'm a grown-ass adult now. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. All I'm trying to say is... She almost scared me, but she didn't. Because I'm tough. Or something. Yeah, no, she's terrifying, you're right. Boy. In the eyes of those teenage boys and girls with their fertile imaginations, the ghost story was both terrifying and fascinating. By experiencing and sharing in a story together, a kind of solidarity forms. Then, sharing in that experience becomes obligatory. Obligatory. Whichever you prefer. And accepting the story becomes a rite of passage for joining the group. That process was an old one that it repeated many times as, as, as the story was passed down. That's right. Back when I first started, started work at Rokanjima, I heard that story from Kurosawa-san and the older servants. I heard about it too, mostly from Nia-san. I heard it too, from Kurosawa-san, mainly. And so, not only the timid-looking Shannon, but a boy, Kanon, and a big adult, Goda, believed in the ghost story. Well. I didn't really believe. There are tales of ghost stories and jinxes in all jobs. There were several stories of the sort at the hotel I once worked at. So, you thought it was stupid and you didn't pay it any mind? I think there was a need to blend in with the community. That's it. Ghost stories and jinxes are all the local rules of your workplace. If a newcomer comer turns his nose up at them, he can't expect to blend in. Godo, I haven't seen you in so long, I actually forgot how your voice works. Damn. Welcome back. Exactly. If I said witches couldn't exist, that it was ridiculous, then I'd get into a fight with Nason. It was easier if I just appeared to go along with it. Come on, if you look at it that way, you'll be cursed. There is one servant who got seriously injured. <laughs> All workplaces have stories like that. No matter how incredible the ghost stories or the tales about the company founder are, you accept and believe them. That's what it means to blend in with your new workplace. Wow, everyone's so mature.
I went to each window around the chap- around the chapel in the, the order I had cleaned them, searching carefully in all the places I might have left it. I had been cleaning the windows with it, so I'd probably set it down near one of those. When did I leave it behind, I wonder? Now that I think about it, I don't think I had it anymore when I reached the last window. So I must have completely forgotten to clean that window frame. Huh. Through the window, I could see the others leaving in groups. Shannon turned around and glanced up in my direction, looking worried. I don't want to be responsible for making everyone wait. So it's actually a relief that they're wait leaving without me. Still, naive though it may have been, I wanted them to wait. The sun's beginning to set, and the chapel's getting darker and darker. I don't want to hang around in a place like this all by myself. I'd better find the small room fast. No, that's not all. I also need to clean the window frames I forgot. Madam is strict. She'll probably check all of the windows carefully. If she does, I'll be the one that gets in trouble tomorrow. But really, where did I lose it? Why did I lose it? The darkness grew and grew. When it became dark enough that I would need a light before long, I began to panic. I dashed around and around the chapel, tears streaming down my face. As I stumbled about pathetically, I could feel the presence of a prankster witch giggling at me from under the door and up by the ceiling. The ghost of Beatrice, the master's mi mistress, wanders about in search of a body to this very day. As she gains the power of Rokunjima's spirit, evil spirits, her strength steadily grows, and she waits for the day of her resurrection. And, for some reason, she singled me out. And if I ever take my eyes off something for a second, she snatches it away and hides it. This isn't the first time this has happened. Whenever I look away, Keys, handkerchiefs, pencils, erasers, all of them vanish almost right away. I put things down, planning to use them later, or because that's obviously the right place to leave them, and, they s and still they disappear as soon as I turn around. It isn't someone hiding them as a prank. It's happened many times when I'm the only person around. Everyone always says I'm too careless and forgetful, and they laugh at me, get mad at me. I do try to be alert, but like some kind of bad joke, I lose things easily when I forget about them for just a short while. So sometimes, I think, I bet this eraser is going to disappear just like everything else, and I stare at it. That's the only time when it doesn't dis disappear. Nothing disappears when I'm alert. So then I think I'm safe, but the moment I start to think that and relax just a little bit, a different thing will disappear instead. Why is it always me? <laughs> yeah, I hear it. I can hear that witch laughing at me as I lamely run around in circles. <laughs> Listening to that voiceless laugh, I finally slammed my ha hands against the wall, crying tears of frustration. Please, just stop it. Why do you always hide my things and get me in trouble? The witch answers. Fool. Isn't it obvious? Why else except to entertain myself by watching you wander around pointlessly? <laughs> I felt so frustrated. 
I knew all along that that was the reason, but the witch being so blatant about it was incredibly annoying. I can tell. That small broom is somewhere in this chapel. No. That's not quite it. Until the very moment I walked up to this window, I'm sure it was right by this window frame. That's right. I'm sure I put it right here by this window. But the prankster witch Beatrice uses her magic, and just before I reach this spot, she instantly teleports the small broom to the next window over. The instant I approach the next window, a hole appears beneath the small broom, swallowing it up. And it comes out by the next window after that. It lands right there, perfectly still, as though it was there the whole time. And this happens over and over again. As I run up to one window, the small broom falls into a magic hole and goes to the next window. And when I go to that window, it goes to the next window. That's exactly how she's teasing me, I can tell. So no matter how much I search, it'll be useless. But if I stop searching, it'll be just sitting there by one window or another. So, this isn't a search. It's a test of endurance. I keep chasing after the small broom, and Beatrice keeps making it escape to the next window over, trying to make me give up. This is an eternal chase that'll end only when one of us gives up. So, I keep going around in circles searching the windows, even when I know I've already searched them. If it's not by this one, then the next one, and the next one. And the witch keeps moving the small broom to the next window, and the next one. Just give it a rest. How long are you going to make fun of me? This isn't the only time. You always do this. Always. <laughs> that shrill, voiceless laugh of, of the formless witch continues to mock my sobbing. The witch is right beside me, laughing at me. As I dash around the chapel, she's following along with me, taunting me. Then, she must be there. She's right behind me, just over my shoulder, cackling away at this very moment. I know that turning around won't help since she has no form. I can try to look, but I mustn't look with my eyes. Once my eyes tell me there's nothing there, I won't be able to see anymore. I learned that from the director of Fukuin House. You mustn't try to look with their real eyes. You must see with your mind's eye. The whole world is filled with God's love. In the many blessings of everyday life, one can find God and angels and the Holy Ghost. If you look with your eyes, you won't be able to see them so you won't be able to feel, feel them or understand them. Instead, you must quietly understand them with the eye of your heart. You don't look and have your eyes reflect their image. You see and picture them in your mind. In this way, I learned how to recognize beings not of this world at Fukuin House. This power doesn't only allow you to see God, it allows you to see all those not of this world. Please, stop it now. Stop this prank. Home? So you can speak to me? I'm clumsy, bad at my job, and I do forget where I put things a lot. But I know which things were my fault and which things were because of your pranks. How amusing. Not only can you perceive me in my formless state, but 
Do you even understand my little game? It seems you are a more interesting creature than I thought. Yasu. <laughs> I'm usually called Yasu and one of the older servants is laughing behind my back at some mistake I've made. So when I hear that name, it feels bad. She deliberately called me not by my blessed name, given to me by the Green House, but, that, but by that unblessed name. Upsetting the heart is a classic move for evil beings to make. That is their way of attempting to prevent others from perceiving them. To beings like witches, being understood is like shoving them out into the light of day. It won't work. In Fukuin House, I learned how to perceive those not of this world. So, I already understand you. Very interesting. I am a being so faint that I would scatter in a gentle breeze. Yet, you hold me in the grasp of yours perception. I have taken a liking to you, Yasu. It won't work. I understand you now, and you're in my grasp. No matter how many unpleasant things you say, you'll just expose the ugliness of your heart. Without turning around, I slowly let my field of vision fill the enti entire chapel. It was as though the viewpoint of my soul was floating out from the shell of my head. See, inch by inch, my, vision, my field of vision is floating out of my head and drifting upwards. As I look down at myself, standing there with head hanging and eyes tightly shut, my mind's eye, very slowly, rose up to the ceiling of the chapel. And when I looked down from there, I looked down at myself, standing in the center of the chapel, and the witch standing behind me. Apparently, the witch realized that she was being seen. She turned around and raised her eyes to look at my mind's eye, floating by the ceiling. At last, I could see the witch Beatrice with my mind's eye. A mere human grasped my form. The demonic lips twisted in an ugly curve. It was clearly a challenging, repulsive, demon smile. She wore a blood-red dress and a hat. The design was completely different from anything humans wore. Her hair was blonde. It had countless beautiful curls, like a princess from a picture book but there was no trace of cuteness about her. I thought you were a little different from other humans, but it seems I was mistaken from the other humans. You are not just a little different, you are entirely different from other humans. <laughs> you sad witch who can be seen by no one heard by no one have you been pulling these pranks all the time just to catch the attention of humans I use what little magic I have to interfere when humans aren't looking but no matter what I do none of them think of it as magic they decide that they just made a little mistake and blow my existence away like the candles on a cake. If so, then I've just saved you. Because I understand you and perceive you. Saved me? <laughs> to me, this meeting with you is nothing more than a new way to kill time. It's getting dark. I don't have the time to play with you anymore. Well, well, so it is. My apologies. 
When one is engrossed, one hardly notices the time. Please give it back. My cleaning tool. That small broom, or whatever you call it. It's right there, by the next window. But as soon as I get close, you move it to the next window over. <laughs> my magic is as elusive as my very own form. With no more than a snap of my fingers, everything here is under my total control. The witch snapped her fingers, and various things throughout the chapel were sucked into black pit bulls beneath them, disappearing. No, they didn't disappear. The instant they vanished into the dark holes, other dark holes appeared in completely different parts of the chapel, and the vanished objects fell out of those. Chairs, musical scores, clocks, and vases started appearing and disappearing all across the room. I felt as though countless tools were flying about the chapel. I can perform these acts, but I choose not to. After all, this would be a bit more than a prank, wouldn't you? Don't you agree? I wonder where a witch draws the line between pranks and magic. When she snapped her fingers again, all of the objects flying about so energetically returned to their original spots, and silence fell. I've taken a liking to you. You say you have me in your grasp? <laughs> that works in reverse. I have you in mine. The Fukuin house director told me that I mustn't try to see evil beings. If you see them, they will haunt you. Now that I understood this witch, a bond had been formed between us. That is correct. Now that you've acknowledged my existence, I have formed a bond with you. After all these years I have spent in boredom, it will be nice to have someone to talk to, even a child as young as you. I'll talk to you from time to time. So, will you stop pulling pranks like this? No, I won't be here to talk to you, but to play with you. <laughs> and, if we're playing, pranks are just part of the game, right? <laughs> Very well. I've had enough fun for one day. The sun has sunk and the moon is full. I am tired after appearing in front of you for so long. Let us call it a night. That single room provided me a great deal of entertainment. Please, give it back. No. I will keep this as a token of our meeting. I assume that you will be fine with this. If I said I'm wrong, would you give it back to me? I never listen to humans. However, I might lend an ear to a friend. If... if you give it back, I'll acknowledge you as a friend. <laughs> Foolish human. Was that your idea of an attractive proposal? If you want to make a deal with me, try drawing a mysterious magic circle or two. And yet, I might be willing to consider your offer. What do you mean you might? I should take my time in deciding whether you are worthy to be my friend. After all, witches are like demons. If you ask us for an answer, we will never give one right away. <laughs> All right, then I'll leave the small broom with you. Please give it back when you decide to become my friend. Very well. Will this broom become a bridge of friendship between us or not? 
I will hang on to it for now, making my decision in my own good time. When the witch snapped her fingers, the broom for which I had searched so long fell out of a hole in the air, landing between the fingers she had just snapped. This is goodbye. This game with you was far from boring. Let us play again sometime. If you're my friend, that is. When a cat toys with a mouse, does it try to become friends with it first? <laughs> slowly closed. When I returned to my body, I felt suddenly tired and let out the breath I'd been holding. Of course, when I turned around, there was no one to be seen. I couldn't feel the witch's presence anywhere anymore. It had gotten very dark by this time. I decided to leave the chapel. There's no point in searching for the small broom any longer not until the witch decides to give it back. I went out of the chapel. The chapel key had been left in the lock. I used it to lock the door. What am I going to do about the small broom? There's nothing I can do. I can't even blame the witch. I must acknowledge that I'm responsible for giving the witch a chance. I happened to glance downwards and saw a small broom lying there by my feet. It was the broom I had been searching for all this time. Don't tell me that it'll be swallowed up by a dark hole the instant I bend over to pick it up. No. This is a sign from the witch. A sign that she acknowledges me as a friend. I picked it up. Well, I am one yet many. The first friend I made after coming to the island was apparently not a human at all. However, when I think back on it, it was only natural. What other sort of friend would you expect to make on a witch's island? This was the first meeting between me and Beatrice. However, as the more perceptive among you may have noticed, this was not a meeting with the real Beatrice. The witch I then called Beatrice would later be known by another name. However, the fact remains that she was clearly not human. And being bonded with one who is not human means being bonded with their world. I still had no means of knowing the strange fate that awaited me on the Rokanjima. Alright, time for a, a, a tea break. Right? Her design is... Mm, good stuff. Also, I promise all of this will make sense. And, uh... Yeah. Well, like Claire said, uh, you know, that Beatrice will be known by a different name later. And we all know what that name is. She does, she looks so soft and also so, like, tired and done. What a mood. Soft, tired, and done. That's... Put that in my forehead. That sounds really depressing, actually. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Genuinely. <laughs> Still, relatable, right? Yes, I, I love Claire. She's great. <laughs> Okay, 
very relatable. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing with me. Alright, I'm gonna put the break sc screen up real quick. So you can't see my tracking break when I leave uh, to get some more water real, real quick. Be right back. scratchy. All right, that should be a little better. There we go. Let's see. Oh yeah, um, quick little update. The new YouTube video isn't up yet. I will, I will put it up tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm hoping to get this one up, like this current stream that you're watching, maybe? Or watching it in the future, in which case, hello. from Hello from the past. Uh, if you are watching this, then most likely it went up at the right time. Hell yeah, go me. I was a little bit busy this week, so I couldn't get the, uh, I couldn't get last week's video up in time. Sadly. But, uh... I, as a result, you're gonna get a, a... You know, you're gonna get two videos in one week instead. Yay. I guess. <laughs> I know it's not the same, but oh well. It's, you know... It's, it's, it's just one of those things, like, if you don't... If it's literally impossible, sadly... It's, it's impossible. I don't know what I'm talking about. I feel bad about it, but... Again, there was no time. You haven't worked out how Gap teleports stuff? Well, she opens a black hole. Then the thing goes into the black hole. And then she opens another black hole, and then it comes out the black hole. I know that's not what you mean, but... I promise, that's how it works. It's magic. Alright. I'm good to go. Let's uh, keep going for a little longer. Yeah, seriously. Not only was Yasu slow-witted, that kid also lost stuff all the time. But even so, Yasu always had this look that said, I didn't lose it, I put it down and someone took it away. It really pissed me off. That kid just didn't know how to concentrate. If you do things without thinking, it's no surprise that your actions grow careless. But it was only like that in the beginning, right? After some time, that kid started concentrating and... All that bad stuff stopped happening. Hmm, really? Well, it was all stuff that anyone should be able to do anyway. Uh, quick reminder, Yasu is way younger than these kids. Like, way younger. So, comparing that is uh, not fair of them. <clears throat> Are you saying that Gap is like the 18th person on the island? And literally just running around like a gremlin, hiding things? I mean, that's a theory I've never seen before, so yeah. Good job. Very unique. See, Kumusawa, she, she gets me. She, she gets what I'm trying to say here. Learning to do things that everyone can do is part of growing up. I doubt the rest of you were so clever about everything when you first started, yes? Started, comma, yes. There was a comma there. <laughs> Are you kidding? If we weren't clever, we'd never have been selected to work for the, Ish for the Ishigamiya family. We're supposed to be the elite. 
The fact that Yasu was young was no excuse. That's right. If Yasu is supposed to learn cleverness by growing up, then that should be done before coming to work for the Ushirumiya family. Come on. That kid worked really ha hard to balance school and work. I think you're all being too harsh. We were selected because we made it through a harsh process, right? There's no need for us to pamper Yasu. I'm sick of this. I don't get why someone as dull-witted as Yasu was chosen. That's a great suggestion. Being selected as an Ushirumiya family servant was an achievement that all Bukuin children respected. The older servants had achieved glory by making it through the strict selection process. Yasu was so clumsy that they all wondered why that child had been selected. Of course, Yasu was working very hard for a child of that age. However, the, other s the older servants were unsatisfied, and before long, they started being mean to Yasu whenever they got the chance. Even after getting used to life on Drogonjima, Yasu could not make a single friend. At least, not any human friends. Act 3. Days Enraptured. <laughs> yes, that can sometimes happen, and always when you're busy. Perhaps a fairy is pulling pranks on you. It's a witch pulling pranks on me. I mean, I know I put it right there, and all I did was glance around a bit, and it disappeared. The witch pranked me again. I left my master key behind. Madam found out. And I got in a lot of trouble. Why? When I always put my master key back in my pocket after I use it. Why was it in a place like that? And this is the third time it's happened. The first two times I realized that it wasn't in my pocket, and managed to find it before anyone found out. But the third time, Madam found it. I was really mad and frustrated with that witch in the red dress. <laughs> Beatrice Sama's pranks can be quite troublesome. But, if you're dealing with a witch, shouldn't you be able to use some sort of charm? A charm? Kamasawa-san started fishing through the kitchen cupboards, saying, Now where did that get to? The thing she finally found and brought to me was a kite string. She stretched it out for me to see, then used a knife to cut off a 50 centimeter piece. Try tying this end to the key, then tie the other end to your pocket button or some other place that doesn't stick out. This is the spider web charm. Spider webs? Like the ones the evil spirits of Rokenjima fear. Good. I'm glad you remember. It is said that the spider webs on this island are imbued with magical power, and that they are very effective at repelling evil. See? If you stretch it out like this, it looks like a spider web, doesn't it? <laughs> this way, that spider web hating Beatrice won't be able to prank you anymore. Does make sense. It really does look like a spider web when pulled tight. Since Kamasawa san says so, it must have some pretty strong evil repelling power. I can just ask her to make several of these kite strings for me. 
and then I can tie them to everything I don't want to lose. But clearly that won't be very practical. I'd have strings all over me. What about things I can't keep tied to me? Like pencils and erasers. <laughs> For times like that, there's a different charm. All you have to do is make a house for Mr. Pencil and Mr. Eraser. Make a house? You mean, build a roof and a bed and stuff? You aren't actually building a house. You're giving them one. For example, take Mr. Knife here, who I cut the string with. I want to go home, he says. <laughs> he gets lonely when he's left alone, so he always wants to go home right away. So, if you leave him anywhere else, he'll be lost and start crying. See, I left Mr. Knife lying around, and now he's gotten lonely and started to cry. Poor thing. We need to get Mr. Knife home. Here is Mr. Knife's house. See? His whole family of knives is waiting for him. Mama, I'm home. Welcome back. See? Kamasawa-san returned the knife to the knife holder on, uh, under the sink. Even though she had done something so ordinary, I felt slightly moved, as though the lost little knife had finished his adventure and finally returned home. Once he slid into the spot he was supposed to be in, everyone in the knife family was together again, and they all started talking happily. Then, Kamasawa-san said we should give them their privacy, and shut the door. The poor things hidden by the witch must get lonely easily. So, when the witch tells them she'll take them somewhere fun, and they're just happy to go along with her, how do you think we can stop this from happening? Take them home right away. Exactly. They're lonely, naughty kids, so they'll go with the witch if they get the chance. So you must always take them home quickly. Look at Master Key there, you just tied to a string. He's sitting there all alone, crying and asking you to put him in his home in your pocket. Sob, sob. I'm lonely. The voice of the lonely master key finally reached my ears. I hurried to pick it up. Took the other end of the string and tied it to my pocket button. And put the key in my pocket. See? I'm home. Master key gets lonely so easily. So let's take him home right after we use him, okay? If you keep making little friends like this, even Beatrice-sama won't be able to prank you much longer. Sound advice. Jangle thud. When break time was over and I stood up to see what I should help with next, I felt a tug, and the key ring with the master key fell to the floor. Once again, I'd left the master key on the side of the sofa, and forgotten it was there. The instant I stood up, the string pulled on it, and it fell to the floor. Without Kamasawa-san's spiderweb charm, I would probably have left that master key lying here again. The master key left all alone would have been led away by the witch and disappeared. Phew, that was close. And once again, I heard the master key, who had been almost, who had almost been left alone, cry and tell me that it wanted to, wanted to go home. I'm sorry. Come on, let's go back home to my pocket. Yay, I'm home. Back at last. Thank goodness. I almost got pranked by the witch again. 
what's this? Nice trick, using a string like that. Using string like that. All of a sudden, I heard a wild, shocked voice from over my shoulder. It was a voiceless voice. A witch's voice. The kind you can't hear unless you try. Beatrice? That's me, my friend. You forgot about your key again, so I was just about to use it to toy with you. It's a spiderweb charm that Kumasawa-san showed me. It seems to work very well. Indeed. I hate to admit it, but it does. I have no desire to touch that. After all, you wouldn't want to put your finger on a razor and slide it across, would you? Uh, that's a scary example. My finger hurts just thinking about it. But, good for you. You managed to avoid Natsuhi yelling at you for losing your key. <laughs> you should be thanking me. Why? You learned about the charm because I annoyed you, did you not? Thanks to that charm, you've managed to take care of the forgetfulness that made you have leave keys lying around. In other words, it is all thanks to me. <laughs> it is only natural that I be thanked, don't you agree? I really don't like it, but she does have a point. Because of all the trouble Beatrice caused me, I told Kumasawa-san and learned the charm from her. Even without the witch's pranking, if I didn't have the charm, I would have gone to my next job and left the master key here. If that happened, then surely I wouldn't have been able to find the key and it would have been a big mess. This is what they call punishment to teach someone a lesson. By magnifying your mistakes, I've shown you what they are. As a friend. And you have grown splendidly as a result. Mm. I get the feeling that Kumasawa-san's Kumasawa the one I should be thinking, not you. My, my. What a, th what a thankless job we witches have. <laughs> anyway, I win this time. Okay. I need to get back to work now. Very well, my friend. We'll call this your victory. However, giving up is not my forte. I shall keep watching you, even more closely now, until I can even the score. Prepare yourself. There are countless small items that a person like you is likely to forget. You can't attach string to all of them. <laughs> The spiderweb charm isn't the only one I have. I also learned the take them home charm. I won't let you have your way anymore. <laughs> let us see how well you can actually do. On another matter, that's quite the bright smile, smile you've got there. When a witch comes, that's a, that's a time to cry, not laugh. Your break time is over. See if you can manage to do your job today without slowing down the other, the older servants. Sure. Today is Sunday, and the weather is wonderful. I'd better do my best. Go do whatever you can. Oh. That's right. Irene has been in a bad mood all, all morning. I suggest you avoid eye contact with her. Also, your fortune for the day is water hazard. Make sure you take care when standing near buckets of water. I am well aware of your weaknesses. I will be waiting for you to knock over a bucket and get scolded just like usual. <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice. Back when I could not yet see her. I simply hated this prank-loving witch. But now that I could talk with her, it seemed to me that she was not all bad. Of course, I felt no need to be grateful to her. The witch Beatrice despises boredom and subsists on mocking the misfortune of others. 
humans and witches are different, incompatible beings. And yet, it felt as though we could become friends. Of course, she was still a witch. They could not afford to be careless. However, not being careless is a very good thing. Using charms and tricks to pay attention so that, so that her pranks would no longer work on me was not a bad thing by any means. Those techniques would be useful for my job and my life, even without the witch's pranks. Yes, this witch called Beatrice would go to any lengths to make a point. I learned that it was possible to build up a friendship through verbal abuse. Ever since then, there was an incredible change in that kid. Because of all the charms? <laughs> That's right. What an assiduous, assiduous child. It's been a while since I heard that word. All of the charms I taught were followed with great dedication. With strings attached to everything. Or else that going home thing. Yes, that kid would sometimes say it out loud. It was really cute, like watching someone play house with a bunch of tools. Just like a kid. The kid was a kid, silly. <laughs> with adults, you can say something one way and all of them will understand. However, there are really, there really are many different types of kids, and you need many different ways to teach them things. If you can just find the right way, they learn quite easily. Um, I'm pretty sure that applies to adults as well, honestly. Some kids learn better when they're punished, and some learn better when they're praised. I used to tell us... I, I used to scare a neighborhood kid and tell him that a fairy would take his things if he didn't put them away after using them. <laughs> this was the same, except the fairy became a witch. Still, doesn't that sound like fate? After all, you knew this kid was Beatrice's child, didn't you? Yes, I did know. So, you told Beatrice's child that the witch Beatrice would play pranks on you unless you put your stuff away neatly. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Ho 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 I just thought of it after the child came and told me that a witch was stealing things and pulling pranks. I took it as a sign that the late Beatrice Summer had become a witch and was coming to teach her child to keep track of things. That's why I thought this was thought this the best way to teach that child. That kid started out with a bad reputation for forgetting and losing things, but got a lot more cheery after overcoming those bad habits. By overcoming weaknesses, those weaknesses become strengths, and that is how people gain confidence and grow up. Those tiny spurts of growth, day by day, were precious to watch over. Yes, it was as though I was watching the very, the growth of my very own grandchild. Thank you, Genji-sama. Good work with the big cleanup today. The guest rooms are rarely used, but... We can never predict when an important guest might stay the night. You must not allow yourselves to become complacent when cleaning them. Of course. All of us are fully aware of this fact. I wish that were the case. When I looked around, I found this. Whose is it? Genji took a master key ring out of his pocket. Apparently, Someone had dropped their master key. All of the servants swung around to look at me, their usual offender. 
come on. Yasu again? Y you should be so quick to judge. I have mine, of course. There's no way I'd drop something that important. And the rest of you? I have mine. Got it. So it was you, Yasu. Do you still not get it? Even after that scolding Madam gave you? You're just so... Normally, I would cower and apologize under their glares, whether I was guilty or not. However, I had changed. So I proudly held up the key with a spiderweb string still attached. Oh. You tied it to keep yourself from dropping it. A laudable attitude. Genji-sama's face was as expressionless as ever. However, those were unmistakably words of praise. <laughs> That's right. You won't drop them anymore. After all, you have your charm now. That's right. I nodded proudly, a huge smile on my face. The proud experience of that day, of that day, of that moment, would inscribe an unforgettable page in the memory of my young life. In that case, whose key did Genji find? There was only one servant who hadn't raised their key. As she muttered, it has to be Yasu's key. Of course it's not mine. And fished in her pocket, her face went pale. There was no room for complacency in the everyday duties of a servant. Nevertheless, mistakes do happen. I will not criticize you for a single mistake. However, Blaming a fellow servant instead of reflecting on your own actions is not an attitude I would consider praiseworthy. My ap ap apologies. The older servant turned red and hung her head. Behind her, though no one else could see it, was the witch. <laughs> My friend will not make the same mistake again. I am ever on the lookout for signs of weakness, yet even I have not yet been presented a single further opportunity. But this is a shame. If I had known this girl here would lose her key, I could have pranked her this time. Pranked her this time. Please don't prank people other than me. Did you say something? Uh, no, nothing. I tried not to feel schadenfreude, but after being called dull-witted for so long, I was finally able to hold my head up high. After that day, I was at last able to feel as though I had become accustomed to life as a servant of the Ushuromiya family. When people compliment you, you feel like you've been accepted. It's very important. People cannot grow without it. And what happens when people grow? Firstly, the mind is freed up. You become able to carry out jobs with confidence. Jobs that you initially carried out while worrying that you might be doing them the wrong way. You're right. Once you become comfortable in your work, that does free up the mind. And what happens once the mind is freed up? You can then enjoy your days more. To use Genji's words, you might say that it gives you the freedom to be a little bit complacent. If you're tense all the time, that just wears you out. It's good to relax a bit if you can. You mean... You learn so much that you can start slacking off on the job. It sounds bad when you put it that way. 
However, there is nothing wrong with skillfully carrying out your tasks quickly and using your free time to enjoy yourself. Times like that are what enrich a person's life. Come to think of it, Goda plays crosswords a lot between jobs. He also invents dishes with leftover ingredients. Playing a bit and refreshing yourself can also be good for your efficiency. You might say that inventing dishes combines work and play. Even Genji slacks off when no one's looking. He'll watch TV or swipe some of his master's drink. And he reads complicated books. Even Genji? <laughs> In short, it's all about cleverly using the gaps between jobs to play. If it goes too far, it can be called compla complacency. However, people only become mature when they learn to balance work with pleasure. Simply put, if all you care about is work all the time, you're not fully mature. So, that kid learned to how to play between jobs. It's hard to imagine that serious kid sl slacking off at work. It started with interaction. That kid formed a relationship with Kumasawa, the person who was always kind, and started borrowing books from her and talking together about them. Even I had friends at school, but because of my work, there was no chance to deepen our friendship. Jessica never concerned herself with her status and was always kind to me, but there was not so he stern orders to think of. So, we were unable to play together very much. So, at that time, it was Kumasawa, the one who was always ki as kind as a mother to me, who was the person I felt closest to. The two of them were as distant in age as grandmother, a grandmother and a grandchild. They did not run around and play together. Instead, the child developed an interest in Kumasawa's hobby. And what's Kamasawa's hobby? Books. It might be hard to believe, but Kumasawa was a pretty big fan of mystery novels. The kid wanted to find out what sort of books they were and started reading them. And that's right. The nice thing about mystery novels is that you can talk about them while you read them. Even Kumasawa, who already knew the answer, must have enjoyed listening and hearing what sort of theories a young intellect could, ch could create. Oh, I know that feeling. Of course, I didn't start right away with the difficult books Kumasawa read. First, I asked for her recommendations and got books from the school library. I would even bring them into the servant room and read a bit during every break. Every time a new theory popped into my head, I told Kamasawa about it, and she, who already knew the answer, would give non-committal responses and grin. That was a lot of fun for me. Are you going to take a bath? Bath time's almost over. Yeah, just... A bit more. Another one of the figures just disappeared. <laughs> You've become a total mystery nut. If you get too excited reading, you won't be able to sleep again. According to Kamasawa-san, the culprit has already appeared. But I don't have a clue who it is. What kind of story is it? It starts with everyone receiving an invitation to a small island. No boat is coming to pick them up, and one by one, they're being found dead in a way that's connected to the nursery rhyme, and each time, one of the figures dis disappears. It's really interesting. Almost like it's a crime happening on the Rokonjima. Yes, that's a really famous mystery novel. Wasn't that one a perfect crime, at least until the culprit confesses to the truth in the message bottle at the end? An incredible book. Shh, shh. I'm enjoying myself, so don't spoil me. Go take a bath now. 
I'll go by myself later. Okay, okay. See you later then. Don't forget to take a bath, okay? Shannon picked up a change of clothes and smiled amusingly as she left the room. I probably won't be able to read the whole thing tonight. Even though I know that, I just keep turning the pages, unable to find a good place to stop. My new joy, the mystery genre, the mental game of thinking and theorizing, and also talking about it with Kumasawa-san. All of that left me enraptured. You've become a complete bookworm. Well, if you do stay up and get sleepy, that just makes my job all the easier. We can't have that. I'd better find a place to stop soon. <laughs> In the times of old when I was born, there were no such pleasures as mystery novels. I have been reading over your shoulder, and this really is an interesting book. Beato, who do you think is the culprit? In the book you are reading. Yeah. Who is the sender of the message bottle, I wonder? The culprit who lured the victims to the island, of course. There are only ten people on this island. And the sender of the message bottle is unknown. No doubt the person who stranded the ten of them there is somewhere far away, waiting patiently for all of them to starve to death. No, that's not right. He or she is on the island. They're one of the ten. I just don't know who. How do you know that there are only ten people on the island? That's just how it is. Since if you don't trust that, what can you trust? Or it's just one of the, the assumptions of the mystery genre. Or... Hmm... It is the owner of the island, correct? They might be hiding in some hidden room. Or maybe they're like me. They may be a thousand-year-old witch. No, no. If they had to go to all this trouble just to kill ten people, they couldn't be a thousand years old. 495 years old at most, I'd say. <laughs> Locked rooms do appear a lot, a lot in mystery novels. And books often use a phrase like, it could only conceivably have been done with magic, to describe them. And here I am, with a witch right before my eyes. It's a complicated feeling. <laughs> Very entertaining, these locked room murders. Once you read the answer, it becomes a tale about humans. Or a mystery novel. But, if you rip out the part that reveals the answer and throw it away... It becomes a tale about witches, or a fantasy novel. Hmm? That's an interesting way to look at it. So, you're saying that there's only a razor-thin margin between human novels and witch novels when it comes to mysteries. If a trick exists, it is a human novel. If not, it is a witch novel. If you just tear out the last few pages of that book you're reading, you might think of that person as unknown, a witch on the same level as me. That might be surprisingly wise, coming from you. So, the culprit of detective novels without an answer is a witch. All the dark places in this world belong to us witches. Therefore, I could reign as the culprit of all detective novels, old and new, across the world. Except, if you reason it out right and find the true answer, then the witch is done for. <laughs> detective novels are quite interesting, it seems. It looks to be a truly entertaining mental game. That's right. This is a mental game. You fight against the book, make a theory, and then have debates to battle friends who have also read the book. Not only that, it is also a battle between witch and human. Will you allow my locked room murders, my magic, to withstand scrutiny, 
or will you deny it? A mystery is a game of chess by another name. By another name. <laughs> so, I'm not reading a book alone, but playing a game against you. Indeed. As Shannon said a short while ago, this story apparently has the truth revealed by a message bottle at the end. In other words, if you cannot expose the truth of the tale before that point, you lose. After all, the message bottle just happened to drift somewhere that it could, could be seen. If it got smashed, smashed and sank before anyone saw it, this would be a perfect crime. A crime impossible for humans to accomplish. A crime committed by a witch. Mm, that's a fun way to look at it. A battle between me and the witch. Yeah. I really like thinking, thinking of it that way. <laughs> Starting now and until you finish reading. I am Unknown, the 495-year-old witch. Can you see through my desert... Deserted Island Murder Tricks? <laughs> I have formed one theory. You want to play with me, don't you? I've been reading books so much, you've gotten lonely. That too. <laughs> Incidentally, the game Beato and I played with this book ended with my defeat. In the end, I wasn't able to build a satisfying theory, and I had to learn the truth from the message bottle. Luckily, it did manage to drift into human hands. If it had sunk to the bottom of the ocean as Beato had suggested, I would have had no way of knowing the truth. In other words, I would have been forced to accept that the sender of the message bottle was a witch. Mystery. I once thought it was just a genre for novels. To think that it could so easily become a fight between witches and humans, truth and fantasy. I was instantly enraptured by this new game. As the months passed by, I read through all of the mystery novels in the school library and started to read mystery novels for adults. I discussed them with Kumasawa. I discussed them with Shannon. I played my game of theory chess, the fight between witches and the truth. How enjoyable those days were. Oh, I am one, yet many. Here's to the fun game of the mind that enraptured me. that applause. I'm afraid we have to end it here. Um, next time, we'll continue Act 4, New Days. Thank you for the save, Reminder Cat. I will now save. And uh, yeah, we'll pick up where we left off next week. I was hoping to get a little more reading done, but this chapter was longer than I uh, thought it was. So, no time, sadly. But... The next upcoming one, the next chapter, is going to be really interesting. I, I say that a lot. Um, this one's going to be a little extra really interesting. Although this, today... There are a lot of moments there that, you know, f for me, knowing what I know happens later on in the story, knowing, you know, having the full picture, ouch, very painful. It's, uh, oof. And I can't talk to any of you about it, sadly, but 
one day, we're gonna finish this, and then you'll all know. And then we can cry about it together. And then you're welcome. I hope you, uh, I hope you all had a good time today. I hope you're ready for the tears that will flow. Um, likely not like next week though. But it's coming. It's coming. Anyway. Um. Yes, we'll be back next week. And. <laughs> You're never ready to cry? I don't think anyone is. Don't worry, I'll bring the tissues. Don't worry, I got you. Um, this is the weirdest outro I've ever done, I think. And my outros are always weird by default, so oof. <laughs> well, let's see. Yes. They'll get there a week too late, but you'll still be crying, I promise. Uh, that sounds like a threat. I don't mean it that way. I wouldn't, but um... Yes, exactly. Yeah, you'll still be needing them because it's gonna be, um, sad. It's just that kind of story. <laughs> uh, anyway. We'll be back next week. I'm gonna upload last week's VOD to YouTube tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm gonna be uploading this one. Sam over party now. <laughs> I always knew this day would happen. I always knew this day would come. I'm, I'm glad it was you who did the canceling, Lulu. If it was gonna be anyone, I wanted it to be you. Yeah. <laughs> can I have your tear glands surgically removed? You know you can cry without tear glands, right? It's like the the inverse of cutting an onion. <laughs> oh god, it just keeps getting weirder. I love it. Um, what do I normally say when I leave? If I can't remember, then I will be stuck here forever and I have to go to sleep instead. <laughs> You're, well, you're you're welcome, Lulu. And, and yeah, no, it's it's like, yeah. Y usually people say bye. Okay, yeah. Just remember what I said. Inverse cutting an onion. Right. <laughs> I actually forgot to say that Monday, we're gonna be starting up game streams or whatever the heck I do on Mondays streams again. So thank you for reminding me. Um, I still don't know what I'll be doing. But I have my eye on a game that I might try out. <laughs> oh, I wish I had the guts to do that. To just say bye and then quit. Um, but no, I have to like wrap this up nice so I can edit it properly. <laughs> It'd be really funny though. But I put my heart and soul into this whole series, so... Um... So I can't... I can't just abandon my baby. Uh, what game is it? Let me double check. It's called Among Trees. Um... If not that one... Then I don't know. Maybe I'll find something else. Um, but that was looking really interesting. No, I mean like... It, <laughs> by inverse cutting an onion, I mean like when you cut an onion, you have tears in your eyes, but you're not actually crying, right? But And if you remove your tear ducts and then have to cry, then you will be crying without tears. See, it checks out. There's a brain up in here somewhere. I think, maybe. Scientists have yet to prove that, but I believe. <laughs> oh. 
that <laughs> I guess that would still mean that you're cutting the onion, I'm, yeah, but I meant like without the onion being on the Pikachu already. I, mm. Maybe I didn't think that through. Maybe the brain isn't there anymore. Maybe not. And hey, well, I mean... When the crying actually happens, I have like a crying toggle for my model, so don't worry about that. There will be no more smiling then. Oh god, okay. Should I cut this out of the, the VOD? No. I'm leaving it in. I, I mean, I'm living proof of that. No bra- almost no brain in here. A little bit of a brain. Like I said, I believe. But only a little bit. Um... Okay, so. <laughs> Focus. I gotta go sleep. Monday. Picking up regular Monday streams. Ooh, that was supposed to be our secret. Can't believe you would have me like this on my own stream. <laughs> I bottle my tears so I can drink them later. It's okay. The world deserves to know. <laughs> It's alright. It's alright. It was time. Salty hydration. <laughs> don't actually do that in real life. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that would actually hydrate you. Um, you could consider it recycling. Water with a- it's like spicy water. It was spicy from the- Tears. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Spice water. And yeah, you could cry into your food to make it salty if you want. That's how that works, right? I mean, that would work to a degree. Anyway. <laughs> Monday. Regular streams, where you can hear me ramble about even more bizarro weird stuff that makes very little sense, but is hopefully entertaining. I don't even know at this point. I'm just glad you're all here along for the ride. And then on Wednesday, our beloved Umineko and our beloved Beatrice will return, and our beloved Babbler might make an appearance and say some really skeevy shit because he's a teenager and kind of a dumbass sometimes. Hence the content warning. Um, but we'll get to that next week. Until then, I have to big time go sleep. Like, really, really need to go sleep. As you can tell from the fucking rambling. Anyway. Yes, hot dogs are kept in, stored in tears. You heard it here first. That's gotta be it, though. I totally agree with you. That's what they taste like. All right. I hope you all had a good time with the stream. I hope to see you all again next time. Thank you for watching, for lurking, whether it's uh, live right now or the VOD. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I can't even begin to begin to express my appreciation. And I hope you have a great night. Happy have a great day, week, month, year, life. See you next time. Thanks again. Bye bye. I forgot to do the music. I'll do that too. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. I got this. I got this. I, I don't got this. Here we go. That's the song. <sighs> Thanks again. Bye-bye.